Welcome to another See You Next Thursday podcast where we'll be discussing the world of football in the last seven days. How you doing, Buttercup? Well, um, I, I'm starting to flag now because it's like 4 a.m. here. Yeah? But yeah, I'm still going. I'm going to keep going just because somebody asked on the site. I can't remember who keeps asking about it. So we'll carry on and we'll get this done. You're a soldier, man. I You're know. Trooper. I know what I do for you, what? lot, eh? <laughs> what? <laughs> what time is it there? Gone four a.m. now. Wow, I'm uh, I'm in full of admiration for you, mate. You All know, right, yeah. let's. Should we start with? Uh, you don't give a toss, with... do you? Let's be honest. Ah, uh, was it that obvious? Uh, Damn, only, I thought. You I... only ever. You always say, "Oh, I can't do an early one. We'll have to do a late one," just because you just. It's just spite. That's what it is. And it obviously suits me better as well. So, <laughs> all right, mate. Should we start with Granit Xhaka telling the Arsenal fans to f off? He had a bit more than that to say, didn't he? <laughs> what did he actually do? What did he say? I thought it was told him f off. Oh, what didn't he? Fly, didn't he stick the V's up and that as well, like or middle finger or something as well, and get, give them stick back because they were booing him. They have been. Gi- so Emery says, right? He feels the fans don't like him. I mean, I mean is that an understatement? He's clever, Emery. Any? How did he notice that? <laughs> He feels the fans don't like him, but come on, you, you that's can't sharp do that. as a tap, that man. Yeah, he's. Uh, he, I mean, I understand the fans are giving you grief, right? And there's ways of articulating and expressing your your dismay at your captain, but you don't tell the fans to f off. You know, it's just. Uh, you're if, never going to get them back. If they're booing you, you just get your head down and work harder, don't you? Prove them wrong, like yeah, Lucas did. You sh- Absolutely. You show them endeavour, you, you show them graft, but you don't show them your middle finger. Well, he's, well, he pretty much does that every time he gets on the pitch, though, doesn't he? How, how, is, <laughs> how is that man a professional footballer at the top end? I mean, somebody's got to explain what managers see in him. Yeah, but also the other thing is, it's not his Emery. I mean, the players made him captain. I mean, that oh. was Emery's fault for the putting it up, giving it, a, a, doing a poll, like a straw poll with the players, you know, saying, who do you want to make? You just make that decision yourself. You're the boss. You make that decision. Get respect from your players by by being a manager that way, you know, being instill some discipline. You don't just tell the players, who do you want as captain? Could you imagine if they'd voted for Ozil? That would have been hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you, you wouldn't want. I wonder if they did. <laughs> you know, his secret ballot, and he just said, "No, it's Xhaka." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the funniest one would have been Mustafi if they'd have voted him. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh God, he's so, a cool. He's so, comedy him. So he's lost the fans, um, uh, Xhaka. He never what had the fans. To be fair, I, I, saying he's lost the fans is is a bit. I don't think there's more than like one percent of them that don't think he's crap. Is there? Let's be honest. Yeah, he's right, yeah. constant butter jokes. How does he get in the team? What does he have over people? And it was the same when he was in <laughs> Germany. He was abysmal then. I, I never understood why they bought him. Do you think he'll get the fan? He's he's never back now. Well, he could if he played well, but that's not going to happen because he's crap. Is he? He, he needs to apologise, but he's refusing to do so. Yeah, well, he's having counselling, isn't he? So, you know, poor, poor love, a bit shell shot apparently. Yeah. I mean, I don't get that. The count they're offering him counselling. What? Uh, I don't understand what they're offering him counselling. Because he's getting booed. Apparently, there he's such a he's such a you know, a, a weak personality. He can't handle it. Well, then you're not going to be much good at the you know when there's a when there's games on the line, are you? Which we've seen to yeah. be fair. So he should be apologising, correct? Yeah, I mean, yeah, you got him. The fans pay their money. If they boo you, there's a you know there. It's not like you can say he goes out there and he plays brilliantly ever. Have you ever seen him have a good game? 
I've scored him. I've, I've I've seen him score a few good goals, but an outstanding game. It's you know the odd good goal isn't a, you know a good game, is it? It's just one of those players that you just cannot understand how he gets a game, and he's there every week, See, first feel, choice. I feel Emery should be taking charge of this. He'd be saying, "Look, right, you need to apologise to the fans in order to get back into the team because if I pick you." I'm putting my neck on the line here. You need to apologise. Start start showing some endeavour and some strength and some fortitude and get out there. You know, and like, I, I think Emery's be, yeah, weak in this situation. He shouldn't yeah. be telling him he's got to apologise. He should be making him apologise. Absolutely, absolutely. An apology should be... And if he doesn't, I would never put him in that team again. I'd, so personally, I if it was me, it, if he didn't apologise, he'd have been on the transfer list by now. Do you think that will happen? In, I think that I think that's a that's a natural occurrence. Do you think it will be January or think it'll be the for me? I'd, I'd, when he I'd put him up on a free transfer in January. Anybody wants him can have him for nothing. That'd be my uh, just. Can't, you can't let players act like that. Right. Yeah. In discipline and uh, it'll, yeah. That's I, the thing. To it's, be honest, it's not so much that he's given abuse to the fans that are giving him abuse. I I get that you know that sometimes, but he's never performed enough to uh, to deserve to have a bit of leeway. Right, I understand, and I also think that a free transfer won't be a bad idea because I'm not sure they'll. Honest, mate. They'll struggle to get money for him, won't they? Yeah, I don't even think they'd get five eight million. I certainly wouldn't. Maybe. Buy it. Yeah, yeah. All right, mate. Uh, should we move on to um, the, Bulgari- the, the, the ridiculous sum of sixty-four thousand uh, euro the Bulgarian FA uh, got fined? Um, for... Is that even worth mentioning as a fine? I mean, that's just ludicrous. And the one game closed doors as well. I mean, oh, but they've got to display I mean... it, and they've got to display a banner saying uh, "No to racism." I mean, that's the, the, uh, isn't the irony lost on FIFA? Well, I, 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 I mean, just don't give a shit, do they? Let's be honest. They're not doing anything is... about the racism at all. The, what they're doing is a joke. Why not ban Bulgaria from the competition? So people, <laughs> that's that would be the most best deterrent because nobody would do that again because you don't want your team kicked out of competition. Because I mean, be you have to prove them... that it's your fans. You know, you have to prove it's their fans and not somebody else's fans turning up there. Otherwise, you'll have like Celtic did earlier in the season when their when their fans got into a scuffle and they claimed it was Hammerby fans had snuck in there, even though it was people with surnames like Murphy and stuff that got and arrested. McDonald, yeah, yeah, it's like yeah. Uh, I don't think so somehow. So. I mean, what in this instance a bigger fine? Uh, I really don't know, but a fi- you know, for? you've got to find them a reasonable amount at least. You've got to make it so that they have to act. Sixty-four thousand euro, even you can afford that. Well, I, I mean, no, you got, could afford it, but got, some of some of us don't got, have that kind of money, mate. They they and they got a two-game stadium ban, which is. One has been suspended, so yeah. they've already they've only got one. They've had a one match suspension, stadium ban, and it's And then they'll, what years. they'll do is they'll just invite kids in for free, so they'll still have a crowd on their side, but the other team won't have whoever they're facing, won't have anybody to back them. So it actually gives them an advantage for the game. Why, why, why aren't FIFA all over this? It's you explain. Afe. UEFA, sorry. Why aren't they all over this? Because they don't give a toss. Let's be honest. They're not really... They've never done anything about racism. They've never cared. But maybe it should be FIFA taking uh, control of this these situations and do, in, in being a, a, doing it as a universal... I think they, you know, they've they've done it to cause hassle with, you know, the, uh, with UEFA is the problem then, and UEFA is a rich organisation that they don't want to fall out with, do they? You've got to have it delineated, you know, responsibilities. But the point is, they've got to make sure that it's enough of a punishment that the Bulgarian FA says, we can't have any more of that happening, we have to stop it. That's all you need to be looking at. 
it's it's not up to the, you know there's nothing more they can do they can't go in and educate everyone but they have to make sure the Bulgarian FA makes an effort and they're not going to with 64,000 are they mate the only person that seems like he was doing anything to put this right was it Stoichkov that was ringing up people crying um uh, I mean they were so embarrassed crying like to people like Sterling and other players that I'm sorry for my my countrymen's actions, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I mean, it's fair he's play turned to it around. Doing he's that. done so much for that country, and, and and they just let him down constantly. The F, the uh, I think it's football union there, isn't it? Not football association. I think it's BFU. They yeah, got. yeah, yeah. And out of something so negative, he's the only piece of positivity and class that has been shown, which uh, is been something you would never have thought of. When he saw, yeah, exactly. he was a bit of a shit. He wasn't the <laughs> great player, he, he, but he wasn't he was, known for being classy, he, was he? He was a warrior, though. Yeah, yeah, but what I'm saying is, yeah. So fair play to the guy. Head you case. know, I think that needs. Yeah, he was. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Loved him for head case. Yeah, yeah. You wouldn't want to be. Uh, you wouldn't want to be face uh, be in a room with him when he's in a bad mood. But um. <laughs> But yeah, so uh, again, I think that needs to be pointed out his his class that he's been he's demonstrated. But yeah, that is there needs to be something done. I mean, I mean, it all ties up with the Divi thing, the uh, Divi flag, this situation, the one a couple of weeks ago in the FA in preliminary rounds of the FA Cup. I mean, it's a worldwide uh, problem that needs to be sorted. I mean, I just don't know how they're going to do it. To be honest with you, I mean. What do you do? How do you stop racism in football? The problem is it's a societal or, or, problem, not a football problem. And until you can fix society, you're never going to stop it. And I'm afraid you're not going to stop it in society because we've had fascist bigots and racists from day one, uh, year dot. So, and we see this politically and socially in our lives uh, historically. So I don't think we're going to stop this problem. I don't think it's going to be... No, but we can at least try. And that's the thing that gets me, is UEFA don't seem to even be trying. I agree. I agree. I mean, I mean, these these campaigns mean nothing, really. They mean absolutely nothing, because I think they're just... Because you can have you have all these campaigns, and then when you do make... When you do uh, punish people, you you hand out sixty four thousand euro fines to a frigging nation. Yeah, it's not exactly you know, a deterrent, to, is it? It's not at all. So it's just laugh at what they're doing. It's just pathetic attempts to just patch over something with a band aid. You know, when you should be when it needs surgery. Yeah, yeah. They've got, the only way to do it is to make it so that the FA themselves, the Bulgarian FA themselves has to kill, you know, has to do something about it. For Otherwise, uh, otherwise, it's going to cost them too much or, you know, in, in I'm all for, I, yeah, no, no, I tell you what, I'm all for people, uh, uh, teams walking off. The first hint of anything foul in that regard. Uh, the problem I is would... then, is that you're then giving the racists what they want. And this is where you got. This is the problem. Is some of them are doing it deliberately to get them to walk off. I mean, we got to remember England were winning six. England won six nil. Do you not think the Bulgarians were thinking we get this match called off? And so yeah. it got worse. I mean, don't get me wrong. They were definitely there to cause trouble in the first place. But I think it did get worse because they were thinking, God, we're getting a hide in here. So, Tristan, this what this just highlights my point that there is, there is no fix because you could come out with uh, an idea and then there's a uh, mm. there's a counter idea that's gonna like you say like if you walk off the pitch then people are gonna be even more abusive should I say yeah just if, for the if, just if their team's losing throw a exactly. bit of abuse and hope they walk off you know I mean this is never going to change unfortunately i really do believe it's never going to change i think that look at like i, I think we we're talking about uh john barnes previously uh, a while back about um him getting bananas thrown onto the oh, pitch God, yeah, I remember things that. change 
nothing's changed. What's that? That's been 20 years? Oh, more. That was in more, the 80s. Right? What, sorry, in the 80s, right? <laughs> yeah. So that's, what, 30, 30 years, right? Yeah. And, and Nothing's changed, really. What, 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 nothing's changed. You're still getting vile Nazi salutes and monkey chants. Terror. Nothing has changed. Nothing. Uh, sobering thought. Sobering thought. Right, let's move on to uh, Bar- uh, uh, Bale's agent being the highest paid agent. Uh, According to Forbes, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, what Forbes the, worked uh, it out thumb? on commissions based on the wages the players get in. The, right. And they reckoned Jonathan Barnett was taking home last year $128 million. Oh, my God. Yeah, that's ten million more than Mendes. And you'd have thought, no, because I thought Mendes would be. I thought no, Mendes would earn more than Raiola. But well, you would think so. But there's quite, if you have a look, Barnett's got quite a few players. But you're just thinking, why would anyone want it? He's got a terrible reputation in the game, you know. As what? Uh, well. I'd, let's put it this way: If you were choosing an agent for you know your kid say, saying to you, you know, I've got to, it's time for me to pick an agent, who would you recommend? Right. You wouldn't pick him right. at all. Because let's just say there's things in his past you would avoid. You know, he's been caught up in a few gotcha. things. He's a bit, some not so say some say unsavoury incidents. Should you say he's a bit dodgy? That's all. That's okay, what he's gotcha. been for. You know, he's. Um, He's known to be not the the clean, you know. They, if there's some back alley payments and stuff, that you'd look at, you'd suggest he's the most likely to have been involved, you know. Okay, and um, so it's him first, and then who is it? Mendes, obviously Mendes. George Mendes, who you'd expect to be top, yeah. to be honest. But yeah, Ronaldo's Mendes agent, second. right? Of yeah. course, yeah. And then and it's then Mino Raiola, yeah. But he's only, yeah, only yeah. I mean, he's, seven, say only, 70.3 million, I reckon. That's because that's Pogba hasn't moved anywhere yeah. for a while. Then. Yeah, but like <laughs> that, when you look at the difference, that's like 50-odd million less than Barnett and 40-odd million less than Mendes. It's a huge dry, drop, like. Shows it the is. Power. I, I would have... Cool. Shows, I just say it shows the power, especially when you look at the next one, is uh, Volker's Truth, forty three point seven million. It's miles down the list, you know, miles down in who's, terms of value. You know, who's Man- is that Mane's agent? Um, I can't remember. They're, they're, it's the agency they represent, you know, that they own. Is oh, the, um, gotcha. I can't remember yeah, which yeah, one. Yeah. It, it's, it's a German agency, anyway. Volker's Truth. So. I can't remember off I, can... of my head. I did have a look at who was on there like. Yeah. And I was just surprised at yeah. how many were how many British players were you know, were With under Barnet. Barnet, yeah. And I was thinking that's an odd one. Cause I really wouldn't, it really wouldn't It really is the age of the super agent, is mm. Well, I mean that's hundred and twenty eight million. That's just commission for the uh wages as well. That's not like cuts and moves or transfer fees or you know, where um, working for clubs as uh, intermediaries and stuff like that. You know, that's just literally the wow. agent commissions from their player wages, according to Forbes. Wow. Obviously, because like you know, they they will have estimated it. Wow. All right. What's up next, mate? Um, I suppose we could talk about Akers and Stanley. What a nice club they are. Um, okay. Gillingham went up to play them this week, last week, you know, at the weekend, like, and they, um, the team hadn't won a single away game. So, Ackridge and Stanley right. thought, bit of early Christmas cheer, you know, and uh, that they uh, yeah. they gave away a free drink, uh, you know, with the ticket to any travelling right. fans, any away fans, just take the ticket up to the kiosk, get a free cold or hot drink, whatever they want, like. And right. But they just got a bit overly generous and they also let them win. <laughs> <laughs> that they that was part points. of the plan. <laughs> I'm not sure if that was part of the plan, whether they were just overly, whether they're just really generous or not. But uh, yeah, the only other team I think that do I've heard do that is Leicester. They're forever giving stuff away. Yeah, but that's only said our own fans. When I mean, this was away fans. Oh, fair play to them, mate. Yeah, that was fair the Jules fans because they've got you know because it's a long journey and that. 
and they'd not seen their team win. That was the irony, because that was one of the reasons <laughs> for it. It's like, oh, you poor gets. They took it. Uh, they took advantage of that goodwill, eh? Mm. Yeah, exactly. What's uh, next, pal? Uh, Nottingham Forest game. You know, there was six games called off in the league at the weekend because of the rain. Yeah, yeah. Well, Nottingham Forest had, you know, all the food left over. They gave it to a local homeless charity rather than throwing it away like the rest would have done. Very nice of them. That's very, Yeah, very and it's cool. not the first time it? they've done that either. So. Fair play. Uh, what else? Um, we've got to make, I, I mean, you must have seen it. The Holston Keel midfielder, Michael Eberwain. Ebervain, whatever it's pronounced. Have you heard no, about no. that? No. He joined them in the summer. hasn't got a hasn't got a game yet. hasn't got on the pitch. hasn't got a minute. hasn't touched the ball until now. Right. He was warming up on the sidelines. The ball came right. came to. He's warming up behind the goal light. Like, the ball came wide of the goal to right. him, right. towards him, and he kicked it back on the pitch. Trouble was, it hadn't gone over the line, and he gave away a penalty. That they scored no. from. <laughs> <laughs> so his only touch of the ball was while he wasn't even on the pitch. And that's the only time he's ever touched the ball for them. Yeah, he gave away a penalty. Yeah. Without even getting on the pitch. That's good. And who's he played for? Holston Kiel. I think it's uh second second division in Germany. <laughs> his team won in the end, like, right? but he must have been cacking his pants, wasn't he, when they scored the uh, penalty? That'd make a brilliant pub quiz question. Who's going to remember that name? Exactly. That's what I'm saying. It makes a good question. I mean, give it. A, I'd, I'd forgotten it. I had to look it up myself. Yeah, that'd uh, flummox some people. That'd be a, that'd be people are getting their phones out in the toilet. <laughs> you sound like the voice of experience. I did that once actually on a pub quiz, and like that was when phones just first came out. Well, not first; they were like nobody really had had them, so uh, one, one, uh, only a few people had them, so you could do that. But now everybody's got them. They're like, I don't know. I've never done a pub, pub quiz in ages, but I'm sure there's rules and regulations against phones. It's no good for you. They have to, be, you know, they they mostly want intelligent people in cl- quizzes, really. That's why I have to use Google. Yeah. <laughs> Bless you. Uh, <laughs> What's next, mate? Oh, I tell you what, I did forget to say to you about. Did you hear about the there was a, that stalker who, who'd been um, plaguing um, Fabio Qual- Qualiarella, the Italian footballer? Assume, Do you remember I just that? Assume that was you. Oh, he got he, no, he uh, left he left Napoli and got like. Loads of abuse being called a traitor and stuff by the Napoli fans because he left them to join Juventus. But it right. turns out, like later on, only people didn't know at the time, he'd had a stalker who was sending him threatening letters and stuff. And like it right. had been causing like a lot of problems. He got to the point where he wasn't leaving the house apart from t- he was only going to training, coming straight home, uh, you know, and right. then going to the games and coming straight home. He wouldn't go out in Napoli at all because of it because he didn't know who it was. Well, anyway, the guy right. who did it is a guy called Raphael, Raphael Piccolo. Right. He was working for the right. postal service. That was how he was sending the threatening letters. But <laughs> even worse, he turned up, this guy, you know, pretending to be a police officer, you know, dealing with the case. What? And that was how he was. Um, uh, so he was pretending to be open and search the carry, you know, find the the actual bloke, you know, the, whoever it was sending the threatening letters, and it was him that was doing it. One minute, how did he know that it was a police case, or he just uh, through the media? He obviously, he's the postal he's, uh, service. The... He works for the postal service. He probably has, uh, you know, I don't know. He probably he probably monitors their phone guy. He was stalking the guy, you know. He, Oh, right, yeah, he probably has some spyware on yeah, him or something. Yeah, I don't know. Right. And, like, apparently, it turned out the guy was doing it to, like, loads of people in in the area. He was spying on and stalking in the, in the you know, in the Napoli area, Naples area, sorry. So it wasn't just him, Maybe it was, like, that... club owners and stuff. So he's obviously trying, Maybe... he was obviously rich people he was trying to scam money off or something, I'm assuming. 
maybe that would explain Adam Alana's form in the last two years. Could be. Well, it, it, yeah. it, he doesn't leave the house, though, does he? Mate, that is, that is, that's weird. That's a really weird and dark story. It is, it's let's well move. weird, mate. It's that everything, you, let, when you read it, it's just difficult to understand what's going on. That would scar me, I tell you, even uh, thinking about it. Let's just move on from there, that's a bit too... T- okay, um, I don't know if you want to talk about uh, Wilfred Boney training with Newport County because he can't get a club. And this guy was a Man City. Uh, yeah. He was a record twenty nine million for Man City, right? Thirty two million, something like that. Bloody hell! He was a decent. I thought he was half decent, to be honest with you. He, he scored goals, while, yeah. And then injuries just yeah. destroyed him. Going to City didn't help because he didn't get a game. Uh, Did he go from Swansea or something? Wasn't yeah, it? Swansea. And he went back to Swansea, but like you know, he got released in the summer. No, January. Yeah, but he, yeah. Did he did he um, fulfil his contract at City, or did he get sold before? Yeah, you get, they they sold him back to uh, Swansea. So he he, he 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 wasn't there for three five years. Um, five years. It was. I can't remember how long he was there for because he spent the entire time injured when he did get you know most of the time, didn't he? He spent like a year out injured, so probably was there like three years or so. Yeah, he, he was one of them that was at the right place at the right time because uh, he was at the start of that Man City like spending spree. Not that they've stopped spending, but um, yeah, he know. was there where he was just. They were just like they wanted to get players in and make a statement, and they just throw money at them. Now they've, you know, they they're stepping back from players like I don't know um, uh, Maguire because they think he's too expensive. But now they're having some kind of. A, they have a budget now, but then it was just like throwing money at people, and he was one of the players that uh, he was. He he got lucky, really. Mm. Yeah, very lucky. He's at he's at he's at Newport. Did you say? Yeah, Newport County training with him. They've said they've got no chance of signing him because they can't afford him. But they are trying to sign that Joe Ledley. Do you remember him? He used to play for Celtic. Spurs. Oh, for, I thought he played for Spurs. Oh, Ledley. <laughs> th- yeah, I, I think it, he might be a bit old. Oh, bless oh, you. Oh, I amuse myself sometimes. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Joe Ledley. Yeah. No, I, don't, I, I vaguely remember the name. I, to be, I, I, I don't know. I didn't know. He- <laughs> yeah, it was all right. And then there's Gareth Barry, who can't even get, a, can't return to West Bromwich Albion. You know, they released him in the summer. Oh. They're trying to re-sign him. You must have heard that one, yeah. Did he play for West Brom? Is he? Yeah, I didn't Everton, know that. Everton. He went on a free to Everton. But if he signs for anybody, yes, the clause in it, they have to pay Everton a fee if he goes to another club. Oh. The problem is the other club. He's going back to West Brom, <laughs> so they're like, "Hang on." <laughs> and this was the player that Rafa wanted to play. Wanted to sacrifice um, so the Jabby for. Yeah, I know. Don't remind me. What was that? that? What was the? I, what uh, was that about? He just wanted a left-footed player to cross. But Gareth Barry's a—he uh, plays in the middle, doesn't he? He did anyway. He played at the time. He was at Villa. He was playing left back, left centre back, left midfield, and central midfield. So he could play all over, and that's why I think that's why Rafa liked him. I never knew. I I just put it down to Rafa brain fart because I never understood the logic behind that move. I mean, Xavi Alonso was head and shoulders one of the best players on the planet at that time. Oh, wonderful player. Maybe they. Maybe it was just something personal they had between them. Rafa, well, Xavi, Rafa fell out with him because um, Xavi wanted to be at the birth of a child rather than at the game. Remember? How dare Javi want to be at the birth of his baby? I know, exactly. <laughs> Rafa couldn't understand that, so <laughs> was where the, that was where the problem started. How insensitive of Javi to be at the wanting to I, be at the birth I, of his I, child? I, there's something wrong with him, obviously. <laughs> I mean, why is yeah. he having a kid during the season anyway? Selfish bugger. It's his own why fault. is he having sex? Why is he having sex with his missus? He doesn't even know it's. 
uh, yeah, exactly. produce children. Exactly. He should have taken. He should have taken precautions. You can't be having that. He can wait and, till after his career is over. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Days of manager. Have your kids now, mate. Don't sacrifice yeah. your liver career. Yeah, exactly. Because uh, Rafa is having none of that. What's next, mate? Um, do you want to talk? You may have got um, uh, looking for a three hundred million capital investment. I'll explain, elaborate on that one, please. The the president Ag- Andrea Agnelli got, um, took it to a vote at a shareholders meeting, and ninety nine point nine seven percent of them agreed with it. It's so it's to allow them to keep up with teams like Real Madrid, Manchester United, etc. Because they made a loss of thirty nine point nine million euros last season, so they've put together a five year plan to try and close the financial gap. So how are they going to do? Because that was the, that bonds, was the thing with the Ronaldo signing. It was to market. increase, yeah. It was to increase their marketing reach. That's why they've changed yeah. their kit to instead of being stripes now, black and white stripes. It's no longer black and white stripes, is it? It's black and white halves, so they can sell more kits. Because oh. obviously in America, the referee, the umpires, and that you know, uh, U.S. sports have black and white stripes, and they wanted to sell more kits in America, so. Ah, oh, that's not a bad. So I've just googled. That's not a bad. That's not a bad uh, kit. Quite like it's that. It's not a Juventus kit, and especially as the timing of it, as Notts County dropped out of the division for the first time, they stopped wearing Notts County kits, which is where it came from. Because they originally they wore a Notts County kit. That was what it was. It's what a black and white stripes. Oh, so it, see, it just seemed a bit okay. off, just as <laughs> not to count you drop out of the league, like say, "Oh well, you know, we'll forget about you now." And our, you oh, know, our historical that... link. Oh, I think I quite like that kit. To be honest Oof. with you, mate. No, it's not nice. I've seen it in the shops. I was having a look at it the other day. It's just not in Juventus. It's just a. Pl- it's it's just nothing, you know. How are they, how are they gonna? Um... Get this three hundred million. Is it a bond scheme or something, or is it going to be investment? Or it's a capital investment. It's an euro. It's a, in euros. Three hundred million, by the way, not pounds or whatever. You know, it's a euro. So, it's a capital investment. It's. I'm assuming they've got people ready. I, I don't know who. So they didn't say who. Oh. So he just said that. Right. The objective of this capital increase is the future development, etc. So he didn't actually say where it's coming from. Soon they must have someone ready to buy in. Was that chi- weren't they taken over by Chinese uh, people? That's AC, or was Milan. That AC Milan. And gotcha. then it turns out the Chinese didn't actually have any money and were just running a uh, laundering scheme, and so they, no. they got taken over by a. Um, because they didn't have any money, so they they uh, one of these um, well, what they call these hawks, you know, they just that loan money out and then take over the business and strip it and that. Like they bought, they've got it now, at the moment. So, gotcha. Uh, that's why gotcha. they're such a mess. What else have you got for me, mate? Um, well, the first true. Real and true Club World Cup is is coming up in 2021 now. They've just, um, or, or what FIFA yeah, president Gianni Infantino that. describes it as, anyway. I think he might be disappointed because there's still a lot of problems with this. But they, he's wanted to, he's planned and he's put released the idea so the that's premise? going to China. What's the and it's going to right, be, the instead of seven teams, like we're going to compete in, in Qatar in in December, it's going to be 24 right. teams in China in June 2021. After mid-season, right? So in the no, summer, at the end of the in... season. You know, at the end of right, the season. Right, at the end of the season. Sorry, yeah, that's what I meant. End of the season, right? So it's going to be one club from every every league, the winners of the champ, the league in that respective country? It'll be No, it'll be Champions League, African Champions League, as now, but then they'll have to expand. I don't know. It'd be I don't know who the others are. I haven't I haven't read anyone who actually makes clear. But but the European Club Association and um, Spain and England in particular are not happy with it at all and might not be playing. There's there's been a lot of talk of them pulling out, you know, and having nothing to do with it. 
but I don't see why they would because why would you want players playing more football, especially at the end at the, when the season's finished? Exactly, and and the African nations are going mad because obviously it interferes with their African nations. Championship is twenty twenty one. They've moved it to make it easier for the European, you know, for the clubs. And then these right. <laughs> and then FIFA plan this there. And so, is this a definite go? Or is it well, just Sonic said this at is the it. No, this is they've named the dates, they've said where it's being held and all that. They've they're, they're saying it's definitely going ahead, but obviously, you know whether that happens or not. I don't see that being an actual thing because I d I I don't think players would want to compete, to be honest with you. They they don't gonna they're not gonna sacrifice their holidays. That's like saying to the players, right, you gotta play uh you gotta sacrifice two weeks of holidays. Who would do that in any in any uh situation? Or it's three weeks a, or whatever it's it is. It's just a bizarre thing to do anyway, isn't it? You know what I mean? It's really bizarre. Clearly it's all about it's clearly money making scheme, obviously, for FIFA. Yeah, I mean it's just but why why twenty four teams? Why I mean turning it into a full mini World Cup basically, but for clubs rather than countries. But you know, it's meant to be the off season. Oh, I don't know. I don't think it's a good idea myself, but No, I don't invest in it either, mate. I'm not it's not for me. Um what else you got, mate? Did you um did you hear about the Spurs fans? The um Spurs hammering a red star Belgrade it was red star Belgrade, not partisan. Okay. Five nil, but but they had two hundred red star fans who illegally attended the game because they're banned from buying tickets due to racist behaviour in previous matches. But somehow two hundred of them about managed to get tickets for the match, and all they could do is put and because they congregated, they moved their way around to one section to congregate as a group basically, and they couldn't get there was too many of them to throw out. So they ended up just containing them. But they're trying to find so out how they got fans. the tickets. They had fans at the game. Oh, yeah. my God. Two, I mean, that's a lot. You know, they must have got them off a... somebody. Because you can't just buy them anymore, can you? You would have you'd have thought that what happens at the games is people sell them through StubHub and things like that. You know, the, 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 uh, uh, the ticket websites, re, uh, reseller websites. So that's how they probably got them. Yeah, but... Still, it's worrying, isn't it? When you get that many, it's a vile, it's a vile problem that needs to be eradicated, mate. As we said, it's just you. You. Speaking of vile, you, you heard about the UA for Youth League match between Bayern and Olympiacos? No, go on. And Bayern beating Olympiacos four 0 This is in Greece, like um, right. Uh, apparently, around they, the police are saying this is how they described it: is eighty people turned up on scooters, you know, forty scooters, two on a scooter, turned up, invaded the venue, or dressed in masks and helmet, and assaulted the Bayern fans with clubs. Jeez, it's like to, it's like going back to the seventies, <laughs> you know. I uh, that's scary. Yeah, a youth team, a youth matches. You usually have kids go in the crowd and that. So it's quite worrying. It really is going back to the seven, eighteen seven. It's like gangs in New York. You know what I mean? With uh, no uh, gangs in New York is what what happened in Brazil. Didn't you hear about that one? The no. before the it's the Libertadores semi between Grêmio and Flamengo, and the police. Right. Arrest, arrested 16 people, issued 27 arrest warrants and 89 restraining orders for Flamengo fans because they got, you know, they had, uh, they got intelligence they were planning to kill police, rob, cause damage and harass Gremio fans. <coughs> that is scary. That really, really is scary. I can't even imagine this of you, mate. Yeah, I mean, a football... Football's meant to be an outlet, it not a be war fun. zone. It's a know? game. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it shouldn't be a, a, a <laughs> it shouldn't be a stage where you end people's lives. 
No, you should be laughing about people putting their foot on the ball inside the penalty area when they're meant to be warming up as a sub. That should be the things we're talking about. I'm I'm just flabbergasted, mate. I, I mean, jeez. How would you just... Why would you even think of calling, causing mayhem and carnage to that scale? I mean, that's a lot of people as well. I mean, to kill policemen... And rival fans. That's wow. I'm glad that um, I'm glad that we just uh, we had the. Cause that caused, I mean, because that was what caused problems in Italy, wasn't it? When they arrested a bunch of them because they were doing something similar. You know, the ultra leaders, and then the ultras turned on the club because they, you know, because they'd arrested some of their leaders. Like, yeah, but football shouldn't be politicized. Football should be, like you say, mm-hmm. fun. It should be an outlet. It platform express your skills not killing and violence i never ever it was never i mean i grew up in the 70s and 80s i never it, 60s not and on 50s, my you mean yeah the 1850s yeah but it yeah. was they were the dark days you know like the, the the football hooliganism and um the violence and stuff and it was so unsavory you nobody really enjoyed it apart from the hooligans you know nobody it was such a happy bright day when that element just we eradicated that out of mm. football. I remember my mum saying you know, the reason she stopped going to the games is when they put the fences up. Because up till then, being a woman, obviously she could just run onto the pitch to get away from any violence happening. And when they put sure, them up, sure, she said yeah. people are going to get killed because you can't escape when something goes. You know, something happens, you can't just get onto the pitch to escape it. So. Yeah, it's just. I mean. <clears throat> I mean, it was a dark. It, it was a great day when the fence came down. To be honest with you, because that was just dark, dark period in football. You know. Yeah, I'm glad they're gone. But like the way it's going, they're gonna be. They're gonna. They're gonna put. You know, put it to, into people's minds to bring them back, and that's the last thing we need. Only in certain countries. I think that we're we've learned our lesson in this country. Thing, I'm not but, sure, uh, yeah, mate. I'm really not. It's just you know? now it's it's outside the stadiums rather than inside. But it wouldn't take much for it to happen inside. Well, let them, <clears> let them <throat> you know, honestly, let them do what they do outside. You're not... Fight right. So let them do what they do, but just please not... I mean, we don't want that in, in the stadia. Because that just... Look, look how many... Look how family-orientated it is. When you're at the football now, when I go go to Anfield, you know how diff, how stupid I feel when I swear. It's just so depending on what section of the, of the do you uh, really need to be swearing to feel stupid, or is it just something that happens to you a lot? Because I'm just wondering. Just so. no, but yeah, I take I get your point, but um, it's like the, 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 what my point is is that it's such a beautiful family, all encompassing. Uh, non non judgmental kind of atmosphere in, in the grounds now that you feel like an idiot when you use expletives or your fanities and that's uh, that's how it should be i don't i'm not into this uh this notion oh it's agricultural and it's working class and we should be able to swear or whatever no you know women and children around and we don't really need to be subjected to that because we can watch a game without swearing uh, we can do a podcast without swearing. I know it's difficult, do, do, but we should be able to. <laughs> We've tried. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but we should be able to. Yeah, but you when, know, it when happens, I'm watching it's a... only the odd time rather than it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But when I'm when I'm watching a game on my own on the telly, I can swear as much as I want. But when I go into a uh, into the stadium, I don't need to with young kids around and children uh, and and uh, uh, women around. You know, so. And that goes. This is what I'm saying. This is all a. This is all about the the violence and the hooliganism so and the does swear. That make, all, So does that make hand. you sexist? Because you won't swear because you said there's women around. I mean, come on, you have to be careful. Sorry, I didn't mean. No, 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 no. I, I mean, I just know that makes me old. Here. No, no, no. That doesn't make me sexist. It just know. makes me old fashioned. Old. That's what it makes me, and I feel old. that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, old. old yeah. Yeah. I just feel, you know, I I, I just feel that I don't swear with, in front of women. And if that makes me sexist, then so be it. But um, I just feel that I, I, maybe I'm a well, uh, maybe I am a relic and I'm a dinosaur and I'm too old. 
you know, that but I can't I just, argue I, with. I've got to agree with you there. I think maybe you are, but yeah. <laughs> but you know, there's um, but but uh, the uh, the conversely, I know some women that <laughs> that swear, yeah, that I can uh, put most men to shame when it comes to swear, both sailors to shame when it comes to swearing. Exactly. What's next on your list, mate? Um, well, the last one now is some, at least something that should give you a laugh, I hope. I, I, I mean, on, mate. Yeah. there's a new stadium being built for SC Freiburg, the Bundesliga. It's not even right. being built yet, and they've had loads of trouble with the local community who obviously don't want it there because they've had to beat loads of legal challenges. Well, now, the latest one, the administrative court has upheld the protest of the local residents that it about noise levels. They haven't even played a game there <laughs> yet and they're already complaining yeah. about the noise. But the best of it is oh they've now ruled that you can't play any football in that stadium between 8 and 10 p.m. on any day <laughs> or on Sundays between <laughs> 1 and 3 p.m. So basically, any time they actually play football, they're not allowed to play football in that stadium. Oh, my God. That's a li- Has a stadium been built? No. Not yet. They're in the middle of building it, and they're already complaining. So there's pointless them carrying on building it because they can't play football. <laughs> well, did you, I think they're going to have to find a way, you know, to uh, have that ruling overturned because it's ridiculous. I mean, how can you have, how can you give a, a stadium permission to be built if there's not, <laughs> you know, if that's not part of it? Like, it's not that Mate, no- a- how noisy do they think it is? That's a recipe for relegation, that is. <laughs> but how many times have you been, you know, when you're, you don't really hear it miles away down the road, do you? Uh, that's one of the funniest things I've ever heard. <laughs> it shows the, uh, the support isn't that local mind. Oh, mate, that is hilarious. So they're not going to get, uh, they're not exactly a football in City Freiburg. No, no. I mean, like, it's just bizarre because you you just can't imagine it. Most cities, they, you know, the the locals tend to be supporters of the club. Oh my god, that is so funny. <laughs> I mean, how do you, how can you lodge a noise complaint before something's even made a noise? It hasn't even been built. How can it be too noisy? The world's gone mad, my friend. The world's gone crazy. Definitely um, has. All right, mate. I think. Uh, uh, are we good? I think so. Yeah, it's not quite an hour, but like you know, everybody will have gone to sleep by now anyway, so it won't matter. Exactly. We we overran on the other one, and I really yeah to pee. So, it's five uh, a.m. here, so I'm ready to go. Yeah, all right, my friend. See you next Thursday. All right, see you next. Th- yeah, Thursday. Bye bye. Yeah, all right, mate.